All right, y'all, so we are back with another one, man, and it looks like everyone is starting to talk about a recession. So it looks like the markets are not looking too great. Everybody's talking about it's time to sell. It's time to get out of everything. Let me know what you all are doing in the comment section down below. Do you take these periods seriously or do you just do what most good investors do and just, you know, double down on your high conviction things that you're invested in? And you just take it as a sale, like more so than actually selling your assets. Let me know what, what your approach to these things is going to be at this current point. And, and, and this, this volatile market, if you're in crypto, if not, what, else, what other assets that you're in and things like that. So, yeah, anyway, let's jump into it. Let's see what they got to say. And, yeah, let's get it. And we would say we are now just moving into the high risk period mm -hmm. of a recession. Traditional markets are failing today as over $2.9 trillion wiped out from stocks this morning due to fears of a global recession, this being the worst day since the 2020 COVID crash. And while this makes sense, we are in the 10th straight quarter in a row of Federal Reserve tightening. It on average takes 10 quarters after a Fed tightening cycle to dip the economy into a recession. And so that way I agree with you. And we're, this is now the 10th quarter. Watch today's whole video as Donald Trump is now suggesting using Bitcoin to pay off the country's $35 trillion in debt. Who knows, maybe we'll pay off our $35 trillion, hand him a little crypto check, right? We'll hand him a little Bitcoin. Watch till the end. Because today, <laughs> Bitcoin is holding up surprisingly well. It Man, did slump talking. a little, but really altcoins are the ones getting wrecked. Indeed, we think it could be a painful. My altcoins are taking a hit. But it's okay. I mean, you know, the markets recover. Like people, honestly, you're just giving us better buy zones. That's really what you're doing. You're giving us more opportunities to buy because people act like markets don't recover. Like, I don't know, this cycle has been going on for how long? And it keeps... It keeps getting better. It always goes down and it always gets better again. I mean, maybe there comes a time when it doesn't get better again, but what what are the odds that this is that time? So, I mean, we can, I, I feel like it, we, can, we can be fairly confident things will recover. Like it always does. But that's just my, my own personal opinion, not financial advice. I just don't think, I think that eventually maybe some systems start to crash. I just don't think now is that time. As we move into the fourth quarter is when our best guess of a, when a recession starts. And to prevent this, central banks around the world have started to cut interest rates. The U.S. Federal Reserve this week chose not to. A cut would stimulate the economy. That'd be bullish. Are we going to look back on this period and say, Fed made a mistake. They should have gone sooner. They could have prevented more fallout. I mean, I think they should have gone on, on Wednesday, and I published a piece, you know, a couple of weeks ago that, said why, that said, why wait? So I do, I do think it would have been better to go earlier, and I think now it is, it does make sense to, you know, move to significantly lower rates. So I think there is a case that needs to be discussed for going more quickly. And now unless an emergency meeting is called, the next meeting isn't until September. Will this be too late? Indeed, we think it could be a painful as we move into the fourth quarter is when our best guess of a, when a recession starts. And why can't the Federal Reserve just cut? Are they crazy? Are they stupid? I mean, what's their goal? We are strongly committed to returning inflation to our 2% goal in support of a strong economy that benefits everyone. Well, it's this sticky, sticky inflation. Yes, we're down, but they don't want a 1980s level, 70s, 80s level second flare up. This has been the biggest inflation price increase we've seen since the back half of the 1960s. It was not just transitory. It was due to massive monetary fiscal stimulus. Um, and I think the Fed has acted uh, prudent uh, in, in not uh, cutting more aggressively, let alone cutting uh, right. uh, yesterday, given the risk, to, which I think is still a, a potential problem um, if, if we don't have a recession. We think we need a recession to get a sustained shift down in inflation or we risk potentially going back into something like the uh, early 1970s. So damned if they do cut, damned if they don't. And if they just wait to cut too long and a recession happens, that would quell inflation. It just would. Yet it would hurt average people in the short term. And check this out. McDonald's earnings paint a scary economic picture. So Mickey D's Q2 earnings show that inflation finally has Americans thinking twice about their fast food binges. The golden arches are looking a little droopy this morning as McDonald's just reported its first drop in sales since 2020 
as economic pressures are making it harder for Big Macs to fly off the grills like they're accustomed to. So early signs of a recession just hit McDonald's. But then I have 12 other... I mean, it could be that, but at the same time, it, it could not be. Because at the same time, I feel like now we're in a day and age where you have more content being posted, health, um, health conscious content is being posted, where people starting to understand just how bad certain you know, certain foods are for you. I think you always have known that certain foods is bad for you, but now we're in a day and age where we know why. We, we realize that stuff is banned in every other country except for America. It's all types of, all types of reasons that, you know, that could be getting hit, not, as opposed to just being inflation. But I'm sure, obviously, inflation pl um, plays a role, but, you know, there's other reasons. There's sectors uh, in the consumer space alone that are really, really struggling. Uh, autos. We think there's going to be, uh, we're going to get auto sales today for July. They might be up a little bit from June because of some technical issues in June, but they've been basically flat for the past uh, year. We think auto inventories are at record highs by a wide margin. Uh, we have excess inventory in the auto space, and so we're thinking we're going to get a decline in price. That's going to be particularly painful for the auto industry because obviously they just gave big wage uh, wage increases. So we think profit margins in many, many consumer sectors from autos to airlines to restaurants are going to get squeezed as consumers pull back. I love your I love your Hershey example. Uh, the price of, of sweets of candy has gone up 22 percent um, in three years. Right. They wonder why sales are weakening. And with now the unemployment rate growing. Well, you're starting to see the unemployment backdrop deteriorate. I know the level of the unemployment rate is low at 4.1 percent, but it is up. It's up from 3.4. It's on the verge of triggering the SOM rule. Second, unemployment claims we saw this morning uh, clearly, clearly higher. One of the things I do is I keep lists like you just showed, and there's a growing list of layoff announcements this week. Intel was at the top of it. And then the question is, why are companies doing that? So if you're a Bitcoin holder, expect volatility at least until the September Fed meeting. So you think he's going to go 50 in September? Actually, this is great. Great time to be buying, in my opinion. I mean, this is this is beautiful. This is a beautiful little dip here. A beautiful time to be investing and holding. I know I, I see all types of people saying that it's a scam. We, we see all types of stuff. But at the end of the day, a lot of people don't do their research. A lot of people believe in the systems that's already established and you can't change some minds. So, yeah, I mean, it's just part of life. You just have to place your bets where you'll place them and have conviction towards what you believe in. At the end of the day, people are going to do what they believe is best for them financially. And that's all we can do as responsible adults. That's that's what it comes down to. This is life. You take your risk, hedge your bets and. Hope that you're right and do as much research so it's not as much of a hope. So, yeah. It looks like now the markets want a 50 basis point rate cut in September, not just 25. Now, to me, this does seem like it would be a little bit aggressive, but we will just have to see what the next few months bring. No, we still think they're going to go 25 in September. We do now expect consecutive cuts in the remainder of 2024. September, November, December, so we pulled forward 125 basis point cut. I think 50 is a possibility if you get further weakness between now and the meeting and there is another employment report. The case for 50 might be maybe they should have done 25 basis points at the meeting on Wednesday, so they're already a little bit behind and, and they have to catch up. And Bitcoin holders, here's what the mainstream media won't tell you. That for the first time ever, Morgan Stanley to offer Bitcoin ETFs to wealthy clients, aka clients with at least a net worth of 1.5 million. I loved this tweet from Anthony Scaramucci. Breaking, Morgan Stanley, the largest wealth management firm in the world with clients with over $1.5 trillion in assets, just became the first to give their advisors the green light to put BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF in their clients' portfolios. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF has pulled in a record-setting $20 billion in inflows in six months, largely without the 30 trillion US wealth advisory market thus far. So institutional demand for Bitcoin through these ETFs is not slowing down. In fact, the US Bitcoin ETFs purchased over 50,000 Bitcoin in July alone, and now another significant on-ramp has just got the green light. 
they think it's good. Who knows, maybe we'll pay off our $35 trillion, hand them a little crypto check, right? We'll hand them a little Bitcoin and wipe out our $35 trillion. But how do you- I can't take him serious. This man is just a troll, bro. Trump is a troll. So that was the full clip. President Donald Trump actually saying, maybe we'll use Bitcoin to help pay off the unsustainable debt. I mean, this is so insurmountable at this point, it's wacky. The only way out is truly to print baby print. And this is the dirty little secret that some government somewhere is eventually going to figure out. Whoever prints the most fiat and buys Bitcoin first wins. I always say that Bitcoin has no top because fiat money has no bottom, right? There's no, there's no uh, backing for fiat money, it's just paper. And I think a few, a couple of things we're going to see happening. Number one, people will no longer accept fiat money for Bitcoin. So you're going to try to buy Bitcoin with your fiat money and no one will take your fiat money. No one will take dollars at all. So that will be a moment of panic. They'll be like, oh, what? That's like, no. Here's a million dollars. Here's $10 million. I want one Bitcoin. Like, no, no, no way, amigo. We don't want that shit. It's worthless. Right? So that's going to be panic. Then people are going to have to trade in other stuff for Bitcoin, like gold, their house, right? And then people are going to be panicked. And um, there you I can see how that drastic change would cause a lot of panic. And it is crazy. Like, it is definitely a crazy thing to think about. But this is the, the world that we're moving into, for sure. Um, I definitely agree with this. But the thing is, I'm not insanely educated as a lot of people on these topics. But you can see... Like, if you grew up, I grew up in a time where, and I, it feels like I'm a very, time flies so quick, man, but, I, like, potato chips growing up was, like, 25 cents. Now, growing up, seeing those same bag of potato chips always over a dollar, like, a dollar seventy nine and stuff like that now, it's like, you see how, you see this system has been breaking. It's knowing that people can't get jobs, knowing, like, knowing people that's really impacted by this stuff you see how the system has been failing. If you're looking at the indicators, you're looking at all the signs of a failing system and a failing society, like this this is it, we're here. And now you have crypto and Bitcoin that's actually coming to save the day. And once you understand why it's saving the day, that's when you can really take your thought process to the next level and, and not be so caught up in a system that's just been here and it's existed. You understand why that system is no, no longer working, it's not going to work. And especially when you educate yourself and learn that this exact same model has failed multiple times in, in human history, and you actually look back to why it keeps failing, because it's just, the system just does not work. So crypto is actually revolutionizing things, and it's it's it's, it's going to be a crazy ride, a bumpy ride. And a lot of people are going to be hit by this who don't kind of put themselves in position right now. Like, and this is the time. This is definitely the time to be putting yourself into the best position possible. Shouldn't be panicked, because... The world we live in now is a fake world that's been created with the hologram of fiat money. This is an ongoing story. Click subscribe and join the 1.48 million subscribers already. And I will be responding to your comments on the Roundtable app, which has... All right, y'all. So there we have it. That, that was the end of the video. This was a great video. Um, be sure to subscribe to his channel. Subscribe to mine. Um, I'll keep you all updated on some of my thoughts and opinions if you all want to join me along this financial journey. Um, I mean, this this is it's a lot going on in the world. I tried to check out a lot of interesting things and a lot of great information to help make better business and financial decisions. So, yeah, um, join, join me on this journey here by subscribing. Be sure to drop that thumbs up. And, yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, y'all.